Good morning. I'd like to welcome all as we gather for worship, particularly if you're visiting with us, and I'd like to welcome those who may be worshiping online as well. Uh, a couple of announcements on this beautiful day. Oh my goodness, I hope you all have an opportunity to get outside and enjoy it. Um, we are now uh, taking sign-ups for Vacation Bible School coming up in June, so we look forward to that. Um, so the information is available so you can get your children registered for it. Also, there's information about the upcoming Mother's Day brunch, and we hope folks will plan on attending that and enjoying that time of fellowship together. Also, we, have, we are auctioning the quilt. If you want to take a look at it, it's gorgeous. It's down in the fellowship room, and, and uh, right now, the high bid is at $250. So uh, get it in there. Get your bid in. It's a beautiful, beautiful quilt. Um, and then finally, for your prayers, I ask that you be praying for June Larson. She was in the hospital. Um, we were hoping she went home yesterday. We're not quite sure yet, but, but please be keeping June in your prayers. Let us now prepare our hearts in, to be in worship together. call to worship is from psalm 46 god is our refuge and our strength a very present help in times of trouble therefore we will not fear let us gather as we worship we sing our hymns of praise we offer our prayers we hear the word of the lord reminded that god is this refuge and this strength please stand for our opening hymn number 403 
Please remain standing as we pray together the Liturgy of Adoration, which is found on page 18. That's it towards the front of the Moravian Book of Worship. This is the day which the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in you. From the rising to the setting of the sun. be to you, Lord God, our Father. You are the merciful Father, the God from whom all help comes. You chose us in Jesus Christ, our Lord, before the creation of the world. You rescued us from the power of darkness and brought us safe to the kingdom of your Son. In our union with Christ, you have blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly world. You have made us worthy to share Your love is so great that we may be called the children of God. Praise, honor, and glory be to you, Christ Jesus, Son of the living God. Jesus, you are the eternal word. You became a human being and lived among us. In you, the full content of the divine nature dwells in a human body. You are the true God and eternal life. You made peace through your death on the cross. Glory be to you, Holy Spirit, our teacher, guide, and comforter. We proclaim your righteousness and grace. You pour out the love of God into the hearts of all believers and make their bodies your holy temples. You dedicate us to God in the true faith, and you enable us to remain in union with Jesus Christ. We praise you together with the Father and Son, now and
The Lord says, I, even I, am the God who blots out your transgressions for mine own sake and will not remember your sins. Go and sin no more. Please stand. Lord, make us truly one in spirit with all your faithful people as we profess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. Almighty God, for the opportunity to be used by you in the life of your church, for our use of your splendid gifts, for the joy of obedient service, we to ourselves to you. for our creation and preservation, for all the blessings of this life, for your immeasurable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the fellowship and ministry of your body, the church for the opportunity of service in Christ's name through the power of the Holy Spirit, for your personal presence among us to guide and bless. You know our thanks to your Lord. For our congregations that we may know and do your will, for our bishops, ministers, teachers, and leaders that they may guide your people in the truth, for the peace of the world, for the renewal of your whole church by the power of the Holy Spirit, for all who in your name work for justice, reconciliation, and peace. For our community, for the whole land, and all who live in it. For the fruitfulness of the earth, and for the careful stewardship of our natural resources. For those who travel, for the poor, the homeless, and the imprisoned. For the afflicted, the persecuted, the abused, 
and those who face temptation, anger, or violence, for the sick and dying, for the salvation of all. Be gracious to us, for to you alone are due all glory, honor, and praise. Please be seated. At this time, I'd like to invite the young people to please come and join me. All right. I'm so glad you came down. Here they come. All right. Good morning. How are you all doing today? Good? Yeah. All right, I need a volunteer. Ingrid, you want to do it? Oh, come on. Sure. Huh? Come here. All right. First of all, you have to tell me. Oh, can I come? Come, come, come. Yeah. Out of these four, which would you like the best? Uh, it's uh, peanut M&Ms. Anyone? Butterfingers, my personal favorite. Hershey chocolate bar and a baby Ruth. So just wait. the Hershey's chocolate bar. Good call. Okay, we're gonna play. You got, you got a lot of thumbs up on that. So we're gonna play a game in a minute. All right, you guys need to help. In fact, you all need to come up and sit here with me. So we're gonna make you step out in the hall, and I'm gonna hide this somewhere in that front pew. And when you come back, I love you, you like chocolate. We all like chocolate. Um, <laughs> When you come back in, we're gonna, I'm going to have you stand at, at the end of the pew, and we're going to tell you whether you're cold or getting hotter, okay? All right. You guys know your job? You know your job? Okay. So, don't, Kim, Kim's going to help out in the hall. No, no, you guys all stay. You guys stay. You're my helpers. I need, Ingrid, I need you. Okay. Okay. Where do you think? Do we go in the middle? Do we go in the end? you did okay so point to a spot where you think it is <laughs> warmer <laughs> yeah. keep going keep going warmer 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 
Warmer? Yeah. You need, need to look. You need to look. You need to look. Warmer, warmer, warmer. Mm. Oh, I wouldn't work that hard, kiddo. Look underneath the cushion. <laughs> ah! You tell yeah. her. You tell her. I did not tell her. You told her. I didn't say that. No, that's yours. You earned it. So, today we are talking about being witnesses, all right? And um, what that means is that when it comes to our faith, we need to be able to tell people why we go to church, why we have this relationship with Jesus. The important thing is, though, is that we can give people hints, but they still are the ones that need to find that for themselves. So, It's important to remember that. It's important to remember that all of us need to be helpers. We need to be able to give hints and help and encourage other people in their life of faith. But then the greatest thing in the world is when you find what you're looking for, right? Yeah, all right. So, you guys did a very good job. You all know where the happy box is. Okay. All right. So, after church, I suggest you go, and you can get two of whatever you like. All right? Thanks for coming up. Good seeing you. You may remain seated as we sing together hymn 399.
The scripture lesson this morning is from the book of Luke, chapter 24, verses 36 through 48. While they were still talking about this, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and frightened, thinking they saw a ghost. He said to them, Why are you troubled? And why do doubts rise in your mind? Look at my hands and my feet. It is I myself. Touch me and see. A ghost does not have flesh and bones, as you see I have. When he said this, he showed them his hands and feet. And while they still did not believe it because of joy and amazement, he asked them, Do you have anything to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate it in their presence. He said to them, This is what I told you while I was still with you. Everything must be fulfilled that is written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms. Then he opened their minds so they could understand the scriptures. He told them, this is what is written. The Messiah will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and repentance for the forgiveness of sins will be preached in his name to all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. I've probably asked you this before. Do you have any movies that you tend to always repeatedly watch no matter when they come on? Yeah, okay, I'm getting some nods. Yeah, uh, for me, of course, it's any of the Godfather movies. For Kim, it's The Holiday. For both of us together, it's any one of the Ocean's 10, 11, 12, or 37 movies. Um, We have a new one on our list, though, and it's called Knives Out. If you haven't seen it, it's a good old-fashioned kind of murder mystery. It's extremely well done. The plot revolves around the family of a wealthy mystery novelist. They've all gathered together in this huge Massachusetts mansion to celebrate his 85th birthday. They have a big party, and the next morning they discover that he is gone. He has passed away. He is dead. The police come. And they believe that he has committed suicide. But a private detective, Benoit Blanc, played by James Bond, or the guy who always plays James Bond, anyhow, he comes and he investigates separately what happened. And so a fair chunk of this movie is him interviewing different members of the family about that night. And he learns all of the family drama about all the different grudges, about all the dirty laundry that they're all trying to hide. And he becomes convinced that the suicide is really a cover-up for something far more sinister. What makes the movie fascinating is that each one of these characters sits down and they recount for us the same event while they're being interviewed. But they each have their own secret that they're trying to hide. They each have their own agenda about what they want in all of this. And as you watch the movie, you're trying to discern who out of all these witnesses may be telling the truth. Now, it's interesting. One of these witnesses, she cannot lie. In fact, you find out early in the movie that she has a physical reaction. She loses her lunch if she tells a lie. And she is the person in all of this who has more to hide than anyone else. And so it makes it very interesting. So, that's really it. Who tells the truth? You know, so many people can see the same thing, the same event, but they all have their different perspectives, don't they? So who is speaking the truth to us? That's a good question in life. Who tells us the truth? Now, Jesus, when he's on trial before Pilate, tells the Roman leader, everyone on the side of truth listens to me. And Pilate's response is, what is truth? And with that, he went out 
to the Jews that were gathered and said, I can find no basis to charge him. What is true? And what? What makes someone a credible witness to the truth? In our lesson, Jesus appears to the disciples. He lets them touch him and see his wounds. He eats a meal with them. I love it. Hey, you got anything to eat? I'm really hungry. But there's a reason for all this. He's doing these things to convince them that he is not a ghost, that he is physical, he is real. So you can see those wounds. He's eating food with us. There's two things that happen here that are very important. The first is that he does that, but then the other thing that he does is it says he opened their minds to the Scriptures so that they can understand them. So now they have this full understanding of everything everything that they had experienced with him during his ministry, everything about his mission and his purpose. <laughs> you know, that is the kind of understanding we only have in life, right? When we're able to look back, we're able to see what happened, and, and then we have clarity because we've been removed from the moment, living in a moment, to where we have a new perspective. We call it hindsight. The final thing that he does, which is very important, is he says this, you are my witnesses. You are witnesses to these things. To be a truthful witness, we only can speak to that which we have experienced, what we've seen, what we know. The disciples had seen Jesus die. They knew about the burial and now the resurrection. They touched his wounds. They shared a meal with him. They were witnesses to the resurrection. And he was charging them, telling them that they needed to take this truth about what they'd seen and experienced. He was also telling them that they should speak about it in a way that they understood it, what it meant to them. And you know what? This is not just the call of the disciples. It's ours as well. As followers of Jesus, each of us, each of us, every single one of us has a unique and very personal perspective about that resurrection and what our life of faith means to us. I think it is so important that each of us seeks to live fully in the reality of that. Now, if you spend any time with clergy or are friends with any of them on Facebook, you will notice they tend to like to share quotes. In fact, one of the things that drives you crazy, if you sit around a group of pastors and you ask them something, they won't tell you what they really think about it. They'll tell you what some guy wrote about it 500 years ago. Now, part of that is because of the way that we are trained to think about things in theological terms. We study and we are inspired by what others have to say about the matters of faith. And I do this as well as any other pastor. So often I quote to you, in my sermons with you, some wise person that I respect and what they have to say on any one of the variety of topics we may be looking at on a given Sunday morning in the Scripture. But all of us need to remember that we have a responsibility and a privilege not just to quote, not to just quote, but to share our experience. Not just what others think or say about Jesus. It's important that we share what we know the truth to be in our lives. We, in this day and age, have not touched the wounds of Jesus. But you know what? He's touched ours. So therefore, we are also witnesses. We are his witnesses. And this sharing of testimony is vitally important in our understanding as Moravians about how we should live a life of faith. You know, one of the most sacred tasks that Reader and I have as your pastors is when we come to that memorial service, that celebration of life of our beloved, it is in that time that we share their testimony of faith the best we can. We do this in the form of sharing memories. And by doing this, to try to point out how faith was lived in the life of that person. You know, just recently we celebrated the life of Gail Blazier. Now, Gail usually would have been found up in the balcony until climbing the steps got to be too tough. And then after that, she and Roger would take the back pew in the corner over there. She 
was a person, if you had met her, um, who on the surface you would find a woman who loved to cook, to read, to travel, a woman who fiercely loved her family and the flowers in her garden and watching the birds. But that was all just on the surface because deep down this was a woman of great faith. You see, Gail was so much more than just those things. She was also a person who, she never w- m- uh, missed a Sunday of worship if there was any way that she could be here. And she was a woman who had a faith that sustained her. Gail and Roger had a nine-month-old son that they buried in 1956. Little Scott died of pneumonia. Now, I did not know about that from Gail until I joined that dreaded club of those who have lost a child because it was in that time in my hour of greatest need she told me, she witnessed to me about her loss. And what a comfort that was to me. Her testimony gave me hope. Each of us has a testimony to give. Every single one of us does. And it's not just about the wise or glorious things that we've learned along the way. It's also about the dark hours where Jesus has touched our wounds. And if we are not willing to own those things and share them with others, when the opportunity arises, then then we've missed a great opportunity. We've missed the opportunity for the cushion to be lifted and, ah, the candy bar is there. So how are you doing being a witness? Telling the truth that you know, that you know about Jesus and his love. I think our goal should ultimately be that our witness is not something we have to work at, but it just simply flows from who we are and what we do. That we accept our wounds and our doubts and our strengths and our gifts is all a part of how we can give testimony of faith to the risen Christ. So I've been, I've been eagerly following the pictures that are being posted of our mission team down in Honduras. And man, have they been working. And uh, they have been sending pictures of the people that they've been meeting. But, but the, there's one that made me smile the most this week. It was of Gary Holman. And so it's a picture, and there's Gary standing in his cowboy hat. And he's towering over this mosquito woman who is standing next to him and she's got her arm around him and she has her other hand resting on a table and this is this is typical straightforward gary talk in the caption table i made for infant feeding program in kunda honduras that was it it looked like a beautiful table so how many times have i how many times have so many of you how many times in all kinds of places that Gary has gone to serve have people been blessed because he simply is using his skills simply using his skills to bear witness to the hope that he carries in his life what is your witness what is your testimony don't be afraid or feel that your faith or that your view of the cross and the empty tomb is in any way less important than anyone else's. It matters. And it matters that we share that with each other. You don't know what words you might say may be a lifeline, like Gail was to me the day she told me about her son. This week I am confident I believe in my heart, that if you're paying attention, God will give you the opportunity. God will give you the opportunity to speak the truth of Jesus and his love. It may be by word or it may be by action. I encourage you to seize the moment. You are his witnesses. Amen. Please stand. We're singing out of the Renew hymn book. That's the green one, number 297.
go now in peace and have courage, hold fast to that which is good. Return no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted, support the weak, honor all people. Love and serve the Lord your God, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. May God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and abide with you, both now and forever. Amen. Amen.